Hey everybody, this is Jennifer. Um, welcome to my channel. Today I am going to do a bit of a catch up, not a complete catch up because I have been gone a bit too long for me to do that. It would take like an hour. Um, but I do have something planned more about like how my reading's been going in general rather than talking about specific books. Um, but that'll be later. Today is a bit of a catch up. Um, with some coffee. Um, I'm filming this on Sunday morning, so I need my coffee. Let's talk about a few things because I'm not just gonna cover books. Um, I have a few things. So let's start off with the reading though, because that is very important. Um, so I started off with Shorty September. I'll link my TBR video below if you have not seen that yet. And I think I've been pretty successful so far. Um, maybe not as like, plentiful as I would like, but you know what? Whatever. It's, I've art, I think I've already read more this month than I have in a little bit. So there's that. Um, so I started off with Plastic Jesus by Poppy Z. Bright. Um, I really loved this and I gave it four stars, but it might creep up to a five because it's like, it's more than four stars, but it wasn't quite like, I don't know. It's not an all time favorite, but it's something I love and will probably reread, which I think in my mind merits closer to a five than a four. Plus I read something else that I gave a four star and that's more closer to like a three five, so 3.5. So <laughs> that's the thing about ratings when there's no like half star system. Um, you got to like, like, cause I'm looking at these two, this two, these two books, this one and the next one I'm gonna talk about. And I'm like, are they they're not on the same level but they're both four stars for me so I don't know it's it's a it's a ratings conundrum um so yeah um so this is it's kind of like a retelling of the story of the Beatles um only you know all the names and like detail some details are changed um, but a big detail that got changed is that in this particular story, um, the John L Lennon figure, uh, Seth Greeley, and the Paul McCartney figure, Peyton something, whose name I cannot remember. Well, let's just call them Seth and Peyton, since I can't remember Peyton's last name. Uh, they're not like just songwriting companions, they're lovers. So they get together and like this is the story of them getting together as both first as a band and then as a couple and some stuff that happens it's got a very interesting framing device that i don't want to discuss um it involves of course seth's murder in front of his like house well his you know his murder in new york city which is a point of history so I don't consider it a spoiler and it happens on the first page so <laughs> not a spoiler um so it's but it's got a very interesting framing device and like as per usual I love Poppy Z. Bright's writing and I just I love the characters I yeah I really liked I really liked to loved this one so I'm really happy I read it and I'm one book closer to being a Poppy Z. Bright completist. Um, though I don't know if I'm going to be able to convince myself to read the Courtney Love biography. I'm just saying. All right. So um, I don't have a physical copy of this. This is not for Shorty September. This was something I had already started in August. Um, but it is Out East, a memoir, a memoir of a Montauk Summer by John Glenn. So this is nonfiction. And so this guy, this guy, John, um, he, he's in his like mid to late, mid to late twenties. Uh, and he gets invited to go to this um, share house in Montauk by some friends he made in um, Boston College. And so, it's the story of that. So there's a lot of partying. There's a lot of like, just like partying, boozing, 
uh, club hopping and stuff like that. But he's also dealing with um, some serious issues of loneliness and feeling like he's just never going to find that special person for him. And he's also dealing with the fact that for the first time in his life, he's got feelings for a dude. Um, so that's basically the story of this summer that he has this Sharon Montauk and how all that stuff plays out with some like background and some like some tales from his like regular life too in New York City. He works as a publisher. He works for the publisher Scribner when this is happening. Um, and so there's a lot of New York stuff. There's a lot of um, Montauk and beach stuff and partying and stuff. Um, some, like, I've noticed some reviews where people just really aren't into that. And I'm not particularly into it either. Like, if I were taking part in it, like, I could never, I could never share a house with 20 people for a weekend. I would just seriously just want to go jump in the ocean and not come back out. But, he writes it pretty interestingly. Um, I do say like I got kind of like tired of it around 60% mark and I was like, oh, this is like going down from a four to a three for me. But then at the end, like the relationship stuff really picks up. So that works. Yeah, so I ended up like, that's the book I was talking about. Like, I ended up giving this four stars. It was closer to a 3.5. And if it hadn't picked back up at the end, it definitely would have been closer. It definitely would have been a three. Okay, so the next thing I picked up uh, for Shorty September was Galatea by um, Madeline Miller. And this is just a short story. It was like all of 20 pages. And it was an interesting, like, it takes place after the myth where she comes alive. Um, so she's a statue that this guy makes and he like, the gods bring her to life for him. And so this is what happens like after and it's through her perspective. So it was really interesting, uh, but it was very short and you didn't get to explore much. So I ended up giving it three stars. Um, so those are the things I've finished recently. Uh, what I still have going on is um, this I'm grandfathering into Shorty September because it's only like 205 pages um, and I'm currently reading it and it's summer. It is a um, an anthology for the changing seasons and I saw this on a bookstagrammers um, page and I'm like I have to have this. Yeah these are all British so I'm not super familiar with the wildlife and the um, countrysides being described there, but it's really interesting and they're pretty easy to read. Um, unless, until you get to the part with Thomas Hardy and from the Madding crowd, and I'm like, I can't read this. It's like, it's a word doily, you know what I mean? Anyway, I skimmed enough to get the gist of the Thomas Hardy, but that was like the least, that's been the least successful portion of this anthology so far. So it doesn't bode well for me reading Hardy in the future, but I'll definitely end up giving him, well, I'll probably end up giving him a try anyway. Okay, so next I picked up Crudo by Olivia Lang. Um, if you saw my Shorty September, I thought I, this was going to be pretty much an instant DNF, and that is not the case. I'm actually pleasantly surprised by how well I'm getting along with this. Like, it's probably not the best piece of fiction writing ever, but um, I'm getting along with it pretty good, so we will see what happens. I'm only, I'm only tw like 20 pages in, so I don't, like, I don't, I haven't read enough of it to know. But it's looking okay to good. Okay, and uh, for my Kindle, like I didn't give you guys my Kindle list on the previous one, but um, one of the books I picked from my Kindle is The Hellbound Heart by Clive Barker. And this is the story that the novella that um, the Hellraiser movies were based off of. And this was written, I think, in 83. So 
It definitely checks one of the Shorty September boxes, but I could not tell you right off. Um, so, so far so good on that one. I'm only like two pages in, so I haven't even read as much as I have of Crudo. But that is all of the reading for right now. So, speaking of, okay. <laughs> so, um, when I was telling you about Out East by John Glenn, I was mentioning a share house in Montauk. Well, that reminded me of a movie that involved a share house, um, not in Montauk, but in the Midwest, I think it, maybe in Michigan. I don't remember. I, I don't remember where these movies are set, but it made me think of American Pie 2. So one of the things I've watched recently is all like not all four of the American Pie movies because I don't own American Wedding. I don't really like that one. Um, so I watched American Pie, American Pie 2, and American Wedding. Uh, no, I just told you I hadn't watched that. An American um, Reunion, which I didn't like as much as I remembered liking in the movie, in the movie theater, but it was still pretty, it, it was still pretty fun. Um, so yeah, I have been watching a lot of 90s movies lately. <laughs> Um, I recently rewatched Airheads, but that happens a couple of times a year because I have a sneaking suspicion that Airheads might just be my favorite movie ever. <laughs> and we're having a Brendan Fraser renaissance. If you have not been watching like all the Brendan Fraser love fests on like YouTube and stuff and on Instagram. Like everybody wants to love on Brendan Fraser. And every time that happens, I get scared that somebody's gonna find like a box of dead puppies in his basement or something. It it worried me about Keanu, but Keanu's managed to like get past that without any scandal, and I'm keeping my fingers crossed. Because it would it would bum me out hard if Brendan Brendan Fraser turned out to be a secret. But boy. yeah, I watched Airheads, which I freaking love. I can quote that movie almost as much as I can quote French Kiss. And then I watched the movie that has my favorite movie quote of all time, which I am not going to repeat here, uh, but I watched Down Periscope, uh, the Navy comedy <laughs> featuring uh, Kelsey Grammer, Bruce Stern, who delivers my favorite line in all of movie history, and, uh, and Rip Torn, among some other people. Um, yeah, that was fun. I also watched Dick, which is a 90s retelling of the Watergate scandal through the eyes of two teenage girls played by Chris Kirsten Dunst and Michelle Williams. And it's got like Will Ferrell. It's got Dan Haja. It's got so many good people in it. And it is so much fun. I love it so much. So yeah, that's the movies. The TV, my TV watching is pretty much revolving around the new season of What We Do in the Shadows and a rewatch of Schitt's Creek. Um, I'm so, I was so excited about uh, What We Do in the Shadows coming back and it's already been renewed for a fourth season. I'm so happy about that. Yeah, it's like my favorite show. Um, not necessarily of all time, but like currently What We Do in the Shadows is absolutely my favorite TV show. Um, so, I've also been doing, like, besides watching some stuff, I've also been doing a lot of exploring. So I live in Central Florida and we have some decent um, walking trails. Like, there's no, like, you're not gonna get any like good mountain hiking and stuff like that. Um, we barely have a few hills to be, to be honest but we do have some decent like urban, urban slash nature trails. Um, like the one I, when I, the one I frequent most often is Seminole Wakaiba Trail and it's completely paved and it goes through a good deal of Altamont Springs and Lake Mary, which is in Seminole County. Um, but it's got so much historical stuff going on. Um, it used to be a railway and there's tons of like, there's tons of memorial plaques, 
like you can dedicate a tree to a lost loved one. Um, there's also like historical plaques and stuff like that. But the best thing, and I don't know why I have this pen. The best thing about, uh, one of the best things is the um, Paint the Trail initiative. And they have artists and like different people, they will paint like, because it's so urban there are, and it's also suburban. So it like goes in the middle of these neighborhoods and these neighbor, these houses have, you know, wooden fences. So the trail facing part of the fences can get painted by like artists and like just people. Like, I, I don't really know a hundred percent how it works, but it's got some really nice stuff. It's got really nice images on it. Um, and I will link to my Instagram because that's where I put my um, my photos and stuff. Uh, I don't take a ton of pictures because when I like to when I like to go, I like to be engaged in the scenery around me. Like I really like it and it feels safer, especially when I'm walking by myself to like being out in like a park or something, especially if you run into like a bear or wildlife. So it makes me feel better to be on that trail and you still get a lot of good outdoorsy vibes from it. Um, so when I am on the trail, I like to listen to um, audiobooks. So what I'm listening right to right now isn't technically an audiobook, but it's on my Audible account. And it's The Pagan World, um, Ancient Religions Before Christianity. And it's a great courses lecture series that was given by uh, Professor Hans Friedrich Mueller. And this is super interesting. Number one, you know it's gonna be good because it starts with a mature content warning. And the guy, um, the professor, um, he has a really interesting voice. It's, he's just very ironic and he can be a bit dramatic and is really fun. So I'm learning a lot and I am really enjoying the experience. Like sometimes I will extend my walk in order to listen longer. And because of the length of the lectures, they're all between like 25 and 30-ish minutes. So I can like, I can have a short walk, I can have a long walk. It just works really well. Um, other than that, what I am listening to is, um, one of my favorite artists right now, Hayes Carl is putting out a new album at the end of October called You Get It All, and he's released two um, singles from that. You Get It All, the title one, and then She'll Come Back To Me, which I listen to like, I listen like three or four times a day. Like, so I've already pre-ordered this. I've already pre-ordered the vinyl and I will get, I'll get an electronic version too. But, um, so I got that. And also at the end of October, which I'm really excited about is the 25th anniversary edition of October Rust by Typo Negative is coming out just in time for Halloween. And it's got like a black and green like it's basically their color scheme in a, like a in in the vinyl. I've already pre-ordered both of these things. And I know it's a random combination, but I feel like if there was one word to describe me, it would be random. So, yeah, this is where I'm at right now um with reading, watching, exploring, listening and my coffee. Um have you guys met Myrtle? You guys need to meet Myrtle. Here's Myrtle. She's my house plant and I have not killed her. She's been here like a month and I haven't killed her. That makes me really happy. The Myrtle is not dead. Um, so yeah, that's it for today. Hope you guys have a very nice week coming up and uh, stay healthy and stay safe and don't let the world get you down because boy, howdy. Um, yeah. Bye, you guys.